Good morning, church. Um, before I testify about the goodness of, of Jesus Christ, I pray that you all will have ears to hear, hearts of flesh, not stone, that will receive my message and know that after 2016 years, my Jesus still works miracles. So, so bear with me. I try to keep keep calm about it. I have to start out as a little boy. I was raised in the church uh, by a single, divorced mother who was very godly. I had to go to church. Listen to what I say. I had to, as a kid. I had to be either dead or in the hospital to not go to church. This went on all my life till I grew up and went out. Got drafted into the military. You know, uh, we talked about soldiers earlier. I was a soldier, and I got caught up in the world. I tend to do that. I was in Vietnam. Uh, the whole time I was there, the Lord looked after me. I didn't realize it. I was in a unit. I was in the first Cav unit division, 15th Battalion, and the nickname was Angels of Mercy. Now, can you believe that? Angels of Mercy. We medevac people out in hot spots. I flew 152 missions in under the first cab, came home together. I got home and I decided I'm gonna marry my sweetheart. I get married, I raise a family, I get going into church, back into the church, I get obligated into church, I work diligently in the church, I became a youth leader in a church in Nashville, Tennessee. And the devil didn't like that. He had always, he played with me in Vietnam. I dabbed in the world, up there in Vietnam, where he, he kept at me. The way he got my religion, he took the people that I loved away from me. I lost my grandmother, my grandfather, my mother, and my, my, my marriage within three month, three year time, it all was taken away from me. Now, I was young in Christ, even though I had been through the, growing up, I was still young in Christ. And instead of leaning on Christ and Jesus to pull me through, I asked the question, why God? Why is this happening to me? I've been your, your person, and you've let this happen. So I turned against the church. I went out against the church. I used it as an excuse. Went into the world. I was divorced. I was a musician also. I played music in the bars and did the, the, un, the worldly things. I always had a drive inside of me that I couldn't control. You know, I, I finally found another woman. I, I married her and struggled with this drive. Struggled with this drive for 20 some odd years. I struggled with it. Start going to church again. I was a box Christian. You guys know what a box Christian is? That's when you go on Sunday, you sit in the pew, and you sing the hymns, you raise your hand up, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. When you go out the door, you put it in the box and put the box up on the shelf the next Sunday. I was going through that. I was going through the motions. Man, I am a box. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian, fooling myself. So the pastor of the church I went to he told me, he said, there is a men's retreat you need to go to. It helped you a lot. He knew what my wife was going through. I was not living the, like I should live. I didn't want to go to this recruit, retreat. They pretty much pushed it on me, I was thinking. So I decided I'd go. So God was working the whole time. There was people praying for me, praying for my soul. I didn't know what, I didn't care at the time. I was being my box Christian. I was holier than thou. So I get on the bus to go to this retreat, which was about an hour away. It was total dark. I was sitting on a bunch bus seat by myself. You know, they were playing Christian music. And I said, I was thinking of excuses. It's just way too loud for this bus. I don't know if I want to listen to this this loud. So I started looking out the window, and I noticed it was dark, and I seen my reflection in the glass. I didn't like it. I didn't like what I saw. God was working on me then. He told me to 
Keep it up. I go, go through the whole retreat. The last night of the retreat, I finally went to the cross. I nailed my problem to the cross and left it there. So many times I went to church and went to the altar, laid it on the altar. Oh, no, no, no. I've got to have this. I've got to keep this. I want to ha handle this. No, God, I can deal with this. I didn't leave it all there. I didn't surrender it all. So that's why I'm saying tonight, today you must surrender it all. Terry's talking about people that's having problems. You got to surrender. You got to give it up. You got to give it all to the Lord, everything. Don't hold anything back. So after about two and a half years, I have lived my life with Jesus. I mean, I've been on fire for Jesus. November the 12th of this year, we, my wife and I was talking, and she was going to go to, so many times there's small little voices in your head, the Lord talking to you, telling you to do this or not to do this or whatever. Well, my wife was planning to go to Florida on the Wednesday before my accident. And she said, a voice told her, said, you need to stay home. That's a good thing because the accident, during the explosion, I was on fire. She heard the explosion the next morning and came out, caught me on fire with the shape I was in. If she had went to Florida, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. So back to get on to the, the situation. As you all know, I had an explosion. My whole face was collapsed. I have metal all in my forehead. My orbital walls are rebuilt with composite. My nose is composite. I had a hole in the back of my eye. My retina was detached. So I went through surgeries. Um, I was in the hospital for about eight days in intensive care. Um, I had surgery, about 11 and a half hour surgery. When I came out of the surgery, I'd been in the hospital five, five days before my surgery waiting for all the swelling and stuff to go down. So when I came out of my surgery, I had so-called fell off the, the pain medication registry. So uh, for about seven hours, I sat in my hospital bed with, with nothing but Tylenol. I had major surgery, and I've never felt the pain like that, no. My wife had been up for five days at the hospital. She was asleep in a wheelchair. And I sit up in the bed, and I cry to my Lord, my Jesus. I said, Lord, you've always said you won't give no more that we can't handle. I'm at my limit. I can't take no more. I surrender it all to you. Take me, Jesus. Take me now. This was at 3 o'clock in the morning. One of my main surgeons who was doing residency in Vanderbilt, he was awakened at 3 o'clock and said, go check on him. He comes, checks on me, asks me how I'm doing. I said, I'm, I'm dying here. I'm, I'm hurting. I have nothing for pain, and I've been through this since from 6 o'clock, and it was 3 o'clock in the morning. I can't handle it anymore. So he says, hang on. I'll take care of you. Well, in the process, he gets the nurses, and they give me medication. So I lay back and just sort of took a deep breath, and the darkness came in over me. And it was like I was floating over my bed. And through all the chaos and all the troubles I was having with the pain and everything, he never let me down. In the darkness, I seen a warm light. This warm light started coming to me, and as it closer as it got, the sweeter it was, the more calm it was, the more peaceful it was. And then a voice told me, be still and patient, my son. He then took his hands and went over my head, went all through my head, my nose, and then went inside my head with his fingers and rubbed all my cavities and everything. Then he told me, you must give up hate and love more like me. Then he left me. The, as he went away, I went to sleep. The next morning, I woke up. My wife looks at me and says, Oh my gosh, I can't believe how you look. There's no bruising. You're beautiful. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. And I started crying. I said, Jesus came to me last night. So I'm telling you, church, you until you surrender it all, 
and give him everything, he's not going to do anything for you. You have to be open to Jesus. You have to be receptive to Jesus. You have to surrender it all to Jesus. He's there. My Jesus is, is a miracle worker. I stand here showing you. It's been seven weeks and three days since I've had major surgery. It's a miracle. I'm here to tell you, Jesus works miracles. That's all I got to say.